So we're here at Tax Outdoors. We're going to speak with Kevin White, who's the business development manager there. Many of you have seen the Mantis before. You've seen it in a lot of our Overland magazines. And this is one of those trailers that bridges the gap between a traditional RV and an Overland vehicle, uh, Overland trailer. Uh, so those people that are looking to get into the sport, maybe want more of the creature comforts of things that you might find in a traditional camper, but yet have the capability to get off road, uh, move around, use the elements, be outdoors more than indoors. So we're going to talk to Kevin White, who's in charge of business development, tell us more about it. Okay. Hey, Kevin, how you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah. So let's talk about Tax Outdoors. You've, looked, you've got a lot of different critters here. It looks like you got a woolly bear, you got a tiger moth, we you do. got a mantis. A lot of bugs going on. Four bugs. Four bugs. Yeah. So what's the, uh, what's the story here? I mean, I, I've described it as kind of the uh, off-road uh, off road edition of what you typically see in an RV park. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, I would say that um, I heard you speaking earlier, our trailer is a nice hybrid between a conventional RV and people that are looking to get more off-road, off-grid, have a little bit more independence, people that camp on BLM land, um, down forest roads, those kind of things. Uh, you really won't find typically a taxa product at a typical RV campground are uh, what I would call a conventional campground, like a KOA or something like that. Um, yeah, our people go to state parks. Uh, they go off grid. We define them as an active adventurer. So typically our people will have an activity that they're going to do in the daytime, whether it's biking, kayaking, a long day hike. And our habitat is kind of what they come back to to clean up eat some lunch and uh in nighttime same thing clean up eat dinner go to bed sit around the campfire i love so, this yeah. idea of a, of a habitat so that's yeah. a description mobile right? human habitats human habitat yeah wow that's pretty clever well let's look at some of the brands sure. you got some pretty exciting stuff so this is our tiger moth it's our answer to the conventional teardrop trailer and one of the things that sets our design apart is that with most uh teardrop trailers all you can do is lay down in them we have a pitched roof that allows you to sit inside at this little dinette table right here. Um, the bed is a seat in the daytime with the combination of the posts and the table. And this post and the tabletop can be removed from the mount on the deck here. And then your couch will slide towards the passenger side here and complete the rest of your bed. Um, you also have a pretty decent amount of storage under the bed. Uh, this oh, particular side of the bed flips up towards the panel to give you more room to store larger items while you're towing. You can even fit a bicycle right here. And then the one on the driver's side will flip towards the front, so that way you can access it from the seat. So it looks like in your framing here, you've already anticipated that this might be a toy hauler, you know. Correct. Uh, yeah, we, we know that people are going to take these off road or off the beaten path. So if you look at the construction, you'll notice, um, a lot of metal, a lot of rivets. Uh, we use a product called Sikaflex that helps bind the skeleton to the panels in addition to the rivets that we pop in. So they're pretty sturdy at the end of the day, pretty strong. A lot of energy efficient, looks like some LED track lighting in here. I love all the wood too. Tell us about, is that one of the trademarks here that you use? Yeah, we, so you won't see uh, the conventional plywood that you'll see in some of the other trailers. This is birch wood that we use for all of our wooden components. Um, we also have cutting board material in the kitchen area. So that way you can cut directly on the surface. Um, in this particular kitchen box, it's kind of organized into what I call two sections. The top third of the drawer is deeper. So that way you can store larger items like pots, pans, stock pots, those kind of things. Um, this is a basin sink that's collapsible. So for, for storage, you can pull the basin sink when it's collapsed towards you and then cover it up. The lid for the organizational storage part of the drawer sits on the ledge here. So that way you have a dedicated area for your camp stove while you can still get in downside and reach your um, kitchen utensils and spices or whatever else you may have in there. And you can also use the top of the uh, box, I'm sorry, the lid for the sink as an additional Very shelf funny. in that little slot right there. I feel like I'm in, like I'm in an Ikea store, you know? Yeah, it's very similar to that. This a flat box with an Allen wrench, right? I mean, it really comes already. Assembled. Yeah, we put it together for you. I yeah, that. we we do that much for you. Let's step up to this Mantis. Sure. Trailer. That is the king bug in the group, I guess. The Mantis is our largest trailer at 19 feet. It only weighs uh, 
3,100 pounds, so it's very towable, even though it's, uh, it's the largest thing we make. It's kind of our family unit. It's designed to fit four adults comfortably, and you can also increase capacity by adding a rooftop tent onto the rear. Uh, you can even string a hammock through the middle where I'm standing. Uh, and it's, it's basically our trailer that has most of the creature comforts that you would see in a conventional RV compared to some of the smaller models we make. Um, I can kind of demonstrate yeah, some features would, here for you. Yeah, so to start in the front, our bunk system kind of functions three different ways. You've got the top that can pull up and clip into the roof and turn into another bunk. It holds 185 pounds. Uh, typically, this is where people will put a little one. And because of that, we have a bunk net that clips up into the railing above my head to keep people from falling out. Um, obviously it functions as a seat primarily. And then if you want to store larger items or extra things like maybe a couple bicycles, you can clip this up against the front panel and have this extra storage here. Um, the big thing for what we call the Mantis 5.1, this is our 2023 model. We just released it is we have this, um, section here called the flex space. So we have a desk that floats freely. You can put it where you need it to be use it as you see fit. And then um, when you're not using the desk, you have the option to use the bathroom or to take a shower. And the way that works is this cube here actually houses a portable toilet, which is a step up from what we did before where there was a more permanent bath bathroom situation here. Now you have the, the freedom. The original one wasn't just a hole in the floor, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, what, that's what it is for most other people. These are creature comforts now. You yeah. have seat. Yeah, and you have the freedom to take this outside too. Oh, versus cool. before our bathroom was a, uh, a wooden built in here that contained a shower pan and a, um, a cassette toilet. But if you want to take your shower, this folds down to form the base of your shower and then the shower curtain above my head it's rolled up right now but it'll come down and it'll snap on to the perimeter of the basin here it'll also clip up into the carabiners and form itself around you how so long that way, of a water tank you have uh the reservoir holds 20 gallons but you also have the ability to plug in to city water if you have a line available yeah and is the water heated yes so we can talk about that real quick on both our Mantis and our Cricut model, we have in this little housing down here uh, a Truma Combi unit. Oh yeah, Truma's that's a great. yeah, that's a propane furnace that will burn uh, your hot air and your hot water for you. So uh, between the shower here, the sink right here, and there's a shower port um, on the exterior of the trailer on the driver's side, you can get hot water to all those three places. I know you got a bolt meter in here. So what are you using for uh, for battery power? So our battery box holds two group 27 size, either lithium or AGM batteries. Um, primarily your functionality in the trailer is all running off a of 12 volt. That's all your LED lights, your water pump, um, your controller for the water heater. Uh, and if you have a refrigerator plugged in, that will run off of the 12 volt as well. And the refrigerator would probably go into one of these spots where you've got these. Uh, yeah, our, right our dedicated spot for the cooler and the Mantis is on this platform right here. Yeah, and I think that's great. You know, having refrigerators one thing, but again, if you're inside out, having an ice chest or having a Dometic or something like that. And do you have ports outside if you wanted to power this? We do. Port? There's a 12 volt plug right on the exterior of the trailer by the front door that allows you to plug right. your cooler in uh, and keep it underneath the awning here. And then the back here, this looks like, a, this is like a dining outdoors for sure. Yeah, so we use this concept. Um, you kind of saw it in the Tiger Moth a second ago, but it gets even more expansive within the Mantis and the Cricket. So we have a dinette table that sits on a post with a mount in the ground and you have this whole seating area. And then at nighttime, when you're ready to go to bed, you unscrew the mount from the ground, pop the tabletop off, and you can store the mount underneath that cushion. And then this mount, or I'm sorry, this tabletop right here will drop into the slot where my feet are. And then you have an extra set of cushions to cover it up. Perfect. And then this, uh, the headspace that this pop-up tent really offers is it's pretty spectacular as well. Yeah, I believe it's uh, it's over seven feet of headroom at the very front. And then down here to the back, it comes down to, um, I think about six, because I'm 5'9". Uh -huh. So, 
So you've got a couple important partners. I see, uh, obviously, Truman's one of them. I notice you've got Thule on, on top over there. You've also got 230. 230 is running the awning on our uh, on our Mantis Overland, and it's doing the rooftop tent on the Wooly Bear as well. So that's the great thing about a company like this is, you know, you know what you know. Yeah. And if you're going to add peripherals, you're going to go to the best providers you can get. But at a cost that's commensurate with what you're with the price point you're trying to hit. Absolutely. So there's a lot of rooftop tents out there. There so. are, and I was gonna say, uh, as a manufacturer, we only have the ability to stop so many products. People have their choices, they like their brands, but at the end of the day, um, all of these manufacturers of these awnings and rooftop tents have them configured as such with the mounting brackets and the way that the tent affixes to the risers that all brands pretty much universally do the same thing. So at that point, it's just a matter of what brand you prefer as an individual. <laughs> Um, let's just take a quick look at quick look at the cricket. Yeah, if we can. That's kind of an interesting look. Now that's got a an awning built into that as well. It does. Um, six foot awning that deploys over the campsite of the trailer here. Same concept with the uh, 12 volt plug on the exterior trailer that you can potentially take a refrigerator, move it outside to make more room on the inside of the trailer. And then functionally, I, I just tell people that the uh, Cricut is a condensed and a lighter version of the Mantis. We use the exact same kitchen assembly um, in the Cricut that we do in the Mantis. It's just arranged in a different configuration. And because it's a shorter, more compact space, you lose a storage tower. So you just have one in the front, but the bed, does the exact same thing. Um, it's a it's a seating area in the daytime, a bed at nighttime. The tabletop drops down into the groove here, gets covered by a cushion. Um, one thing the Cricut is kind of famous for that is not present in this current model or unit that we have on site today is that the kids' berths um, are what little kids sleep in. So the Cricut was primarily designed for like a young family. Um, the berths will clip into those brackets in the back. They're basically like cots and they'll carabiner up into the holes right here. Oh my gosh, and then that would be so cool. they sit level over the bed at nighttime. One of the great things about the kids' berths though is even if you're not camping with kids, they're great for storage. So what you can do in the morning when you wake up is you can take all the stuff, all your sleeping bags, your blankets off the bed, throw them in the berths and pin them up into the roof and they're out of your way to, are, are out of your way for the daytime. I kind of feel like I'm in a spaceship, you know? It's like, yeah. Oh Scotty, sit in, sit yeah, in the upper hood. Yeah, once you, uh, once you mentioned the NASA thing, you can definitely see the kind of the futuristic uh, kind of sci-fi design, if you Very will. Cool. Yeah. So, well, listen, hey, thanks for all the tours. Let's talk a little bit about how people get a hold of your product. Do you work through a dealer network? Or? Yeah, we have 40-something uh, dealers between the United States and Canada um, located in, in most me major metro areas. Uh, in particular, at this show, we're working with our dealer partner out of Orange, Virginia called Road Trip Camping. Um, and we also have um, ability for people to dial directly into our office and talk to someone like myself. I'm a habitat specialist for Tax Outdoors and I can answer all your questions, kind of go through some of the things like we did in this video, uh, talk about your use case, talk about your tow vehicle, what kind of gear you like to go out with. We basically help you narrow your narrow your decision down to what works best for you based on what you described to us. Well, that was a fantastic tour. And you know, I feel like I feel like I'm looking at a camper, but I I just feel more comfortable, you know? And I yeah. love the way you guys have opened up the outdoors. What was a window in someone else's camper is an open portal for right. the outdoors. Exactly. So, I mean, between the natural materials you use and everything else, it's really a fantastic product. So, check it out. What's the website? T-A-X-A? T-A-X-A. Taxa Outdoors, all one word, dot com. Great. Check it out, folks. This is a great uh, a great company, and they're certainly bridging the gap for us, or those that are looking to find something more comfortable for the uh, off-road enthusiast, but still has creature comforts of what you're looking for. So, thanks again, man. Thank you very much. Thanks for stopping by.